Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bhante. Good morning, Bhante. Good morning. Today, I want to speak on another topic. This is called uh, uh, going uh, along with the stream. Going along with the stream. <clears throat> you find this discourse in uh, uh, Anguttara Nikaya in the uh, fourth section called Chatukka Nipata and there the Buddha said because there are these four kinds of persons found in existence in the world what for? The person who goes along with the stream the one who goes against the stream, the one who inwardly firm, and the one who has crossed over and gone beyond. The Brahmin who stands on high ground. Here the word Brahmin is used to denote enlightened person and arahant now that person <coughs> is gone beyond the stream a pali word is uh, anusota gami anusota sota <clears throat> is used for stream, stream of water. We also we use the word uh, sort also for the noble eightfold path. The word sort also used for the ear. There are several meanings of the word sort. Here, it is uh, used figuratively for the stream of water, sort of. Actually, yeah, figuratively, is, is this was used for the Noble Eightfold Path, but literally it is used for the ear, and the stream of water. For example, Nadi Soto in Pali, Soto. So there are these four kinds of people. One person goes along with the stream, one person goes against the stream, one person is firm inwardly and one person is gone beyond, cross over and gone beyond and uh, who stands in on high land. So, uh, just imagine this in this simile, one goes with the stream, go on with the stream. That is the person who go with the crowd. Suppose there are two events in two public parks. One event is concert or singing, dancing, musical, musical festival. And at the 
are on the other spectrum of the park or in a different park, there is a sermon, Dhamma sermon, teaching people in the concert ground, you have all entertainment, singing, dancing, and stimulation. Uh, uh, what you call sensual stimulations is on that one own park. Other park is uh, you hear a Dhamma sermon giving a sermon to calm the mind, make the mind peaceful, to um, make people understand the truth and uh, understand the suffering and get rid of suffering, uh, attaining Nibbana and so forth. These are the things are taught in the other park. So who goes to the musical concert, uh, concert uh, festival? Most of the people go there. That is called Anusotagami, going against the wind, the, go, going with the wind, going with the current, going with the current. Because that is the cheapest thing, easy to be dragged into. The most people go on that route, go on in that direction. So very few people escape. They may not necessarily be very old people. They may even be young people. People who are very serious about life. And they are tired of this uh, going with the current. Now they want to go against the current. And they go towards the place where they hear the Dhamma. So, <clears throat> there are uh, those, who, uh, those who have uncontrolled sense pleasures. Sense pleasure they cannot control because it is so enticing. Uh, and they are not interested in getting rid of it. They are lust, not interested in getting into uh, greed. So they go along with that. And they enjoy sensual pleasure here. And then uh, they uh, will die uh, incompl with incomplete sensual pleasures, hoping to have more sensual pleasures in the next life, if there is any. If they could not finish, complete their sensual pleasures in this life, they want to go to another life. So, enjoy there. Uh, and then come, come back again to birth, sickness, old age, and death. This is the uh, reward we get from sensual pleasures. Uh, and so they go in that direction. And therefore they are called Anusotagami, going with the current, with the mass, with the wave, with the wind, going with the wind. And there is another group of people, another person, uh, who is called going against the current, going against the wind. Here is someone who is not uh, interested in indulging, indulging in sensual pleasures. Not interested. Uh, not because he is sick, but he is so wise. He has uh, seen enough of it and seen the danger of it and therefore he is tired of it. 
even though he is still capable of enjoying sensual pleasures, seeing the danger, disadvantage of that pleasure, that person goes against the current. So that person, uh, even with pain and dejection, weeping with tearful face, that person lives a complete, purified spiritual life. The spiritual life is not that easy, not that simple. You remember the story of Nanda, who has to leave his uh, uh, bride, and when he went to the monastery with the Buddha, Buddha asked him to become a monk. He became a monk. Since then, he could not live monk's life. It was so difficult. And uh, he wanted to return home. Of course, Buddha gave him a small, special instructions and finally he realized his uh, weakness. But somebody else also lives in a monastic life with all difficulties, all pains and all sufferings, with uh, a tearful face, with great pain, because the reward is going to be very pleasant. It is just like when you have wound, a physician or a doctor or somebody who knows how to treat it will come and clean the wound. When he cleans the wound, it is not uh, very pleasant. It's very painful, even maybe even more bleeding. But while he was cleaning, he removes all the germs on the wound and uh, use uh, uh, medicine, put medicine, cover it. All during all these processes, he has pain. But the outcome is very, very satisfactory. Similarly, somebody knowing the danger of sensual pleasures goes against it, and going against it is not very easy at that time. He has to restrain his senses, restrain his uh, uh, activities, thoughts, words, and deeds, and has to go through a lot of pain. But still he knows the outcome is going to be very, very peaceful. Even with that uh, difficulties, pains, he goes through that difficult period. So he is uh, mindful, eating mindfully, drinking mindfully, dressing up mindfully, doing all activities, daily regular activities with mindfulness. That is not very easy. That's difficult. And he, decided, and he resolved not to resort to sensual pleasures because that is always painful. So he lives like that. And uh, yes, whatever interest he had before in the enjoyment of sensual pleasures, he gives this up, keeps the mind steady. Sen 
enjoying sensual pleasure makes the mind unsteady. Unsteady. Agitation, excitement, even jealousy, fear, tension, all these can arise from the sensual pleasures. So he knows that. So he with, del with de deliberately, with difficulties, he stays out of that. That is called one who goes against the current, against the stream, against the wind. And there is a third person, Buddha said, that is even more difficult. Uh, that person is called the person with the utter destruction of five lower fetters. Some person of spontaneous birth due to attain final Nibbana there without ever returning from that world. This is called the person who is inwardly firm. That's the third person. Inwardly firm because that person has completely destroyed five lower fetters. What are the five lower fetters? Uh, desire for uh, view of personality view that there is a permanent eternal self in him or her. So he, through the practice of Dhamma, practice of meditation, through insight, wisdom, that person knows that there is no permanent self. Now, in the society, notion of sensual self, permanent self is very strongly established. People think that there is some permanent eternal self. Just like some people believe that there is a permanent eternal creator, creating being. So he doesn't believe in that. No doubt about it. He doesn't believe that there is a permanent. This is one fetter that binds us to samsara. Then there's a second fetter, uh, doubt. Doubt about the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, higher morality, rebirth, dependent origination, karma, they have doubt about these places. The, if they have doubt about the Buddha, they cannot proceed with the practice of the meditation or Dhamma and get expected wholesome results. And therefore, this becomes a fetter. Therefore, when, he, when one has this, uh, what you call, skeptical doubt, the person will continue to exist in samsarik to, to, and experience great deal of pain, birth, decay, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. These are the rewards that they get by having uh, this uh, skeptical doubt. And therefore, the one who practices Dhamma meditation, insight meditation, will definitely see things exactly as they are. See the five aggregates as they are. The five aggregates, each and every one of them is changing, is impermanent, no way, nothing, one iota of it remains permanent, impermanent. 
seeing impermanent, the person understands that there is no permanent, eternal anything. Therefore, his doubt will vanish. And the third fetter is called in, the, in believing in attaining liberation by following rules and regulations, rituals, sila, vata, paramasa, holding on to permanent, eternal uh, attainment uh, by following rituals. Rituals. Uh, rituals are rituals dominate our life in all religious traditions, and therefore that would take all our time. When we practice them, they, we simply waste our time. We don't gain, gain insight, and therefore people are so. Uh, enticed with it and attached to this, cling to it, and therefore it is called a fetter. Fetter. Fourth fetter is greed. Greed. Greed actually is the most powerful fetter. All the troubles in the world comes from greed. We don't, they, they, are, they are all kind of greed for sensual pleasure, uh, then to re exist again and again in samsara, and uh, there's another strong uh, desire for not existing in samsara. In samsara, we know, we have, there's a desire for uh, sensual pleasures. We, do, we want to please our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. This is called sensual pleasures. And as I mentioned earlier, this is called tanna, craving, desire. And the fifth fetter is hatred, just the opposite of it. Anger, jealousy, rivalry, hurting others, thinking of uh, uh, taking revenge, and so forth. This is the fifth fetter. When these five fetters are completely eliminated from the mind, that person is called one who gone, one, one who not only gone against the current, but that person is firmly, firm inwardly, inwardly firm, and is bound, he, he would, after his death, he would never come back to this world again, and he would be reborn in one of the five pure abodes called Suddha Vasa. They are called Avya, Atap, Sudasa, Sudasi, Akanitaka. These are the five pure abodes. Once he is reborn there, there are various uh, uh, details about it. I don't have time to explain all the de to go into details, but they will be born in those states and will never come back again, and they are the attained only born. Uh, they are called uh, his, uh, uh, Retrogress again to a, to my mastery, never to retrogress, unable to retrogress, unable to return to unwholesome state of mind. 
and therefore their mind is firmly established within himself. Then the fourth person is called uh, one with the destruction of taints, with the destruction of the taints. Some person has realized for himself with the direct knowledge in this very life, the taintless liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, and having entered upon it, he dwells in it. This is called a person who has crossed over and gone beyond at the Brahmin who stands on the high ground. Now, what is this person? This is this person is uh, the one who comprehended the things high and low. That is all chains are server. Anusaya. High means asava, anusaya means underlying tendencies, very subtle defilement. They go anusaya. You know, the word anu in this place is called anusaya, is used for, in general, anu means atom. So, the the defilement, metaphorically speaking, that person destroyed all the subatomic particles like defilements. I use this subatomic particle metaphor. The, the it is a material simile, but we can use to understand that the defilements is. Uh, to mean that the defilements are completely destroyed without leaving any residues. So, and stand on higher ground, meaning he is the one who is above all other individuals. Now, the tents there are various ways of destroying taints, or server. There is a very special discourse in Majjhimnikas, Majjhimnikas Sutta number two. It's called uh, the discourse on the or discourse of destroying of all the taints. Asava. Asava means, Asava Pali word, I use the word Asava. Asava means uh, in Sanskrit something that you have brewed for a long period of time. Say, for instance, uh, you take various nuts and roots and bark, leaves and various things, all kind of, all the concoction. Uh, put into a container and bury in the ground and leave it there to ferment it for a long time. After long time fermentation, it becomes very strong, powerful intoxicant. So when you take it, you will be intoxicated. And that kind of concoction <coughs> is called asrava. In Sanskrit, asrava. Pali asrava. So in our mind, all kind of defilements are brewed in long time in samsara. And longer they stay in the mind, the stronger they become, like wine. Longer you keep, the stronger it becomes. That's what I heard. I, 
I don't speak from my experience, but that's what I heard. So we have brewed these uh, chains in our mind uh, in samsara. And, and there are ways of destroying them. One is, the Buddha said, uh, there are taints that should be abandoned by seeing. Some taints we can abandon, destroy, eliminate by seeing. Because dasana, dasana means seeing. With, not with the eye, but with the mind. With mind's wisdom or mind's eye, the mind's eye is, eye is called wisdom. It functions just like our regular eyes. Wisdom can penetrate things very easily, clearly. And just like X-ray. Then you take X-ray, you can see the inside of your body. Similarly, wisdom can penetrate things. And through the penetration, we can destroy some of the defilements. That's called dasana napahatabba. Dasana means seeing. And there are some things we can abandon by restraining. Restraining. Like uh, <clears throat> uh, our senses. We restrain our senses. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. We restrain them, discipline them, calm them down. And that way we can overcome some taints, some arsavas. And there are some taints we can overcome by abandoning. Like uh, uh, hatred. We, we abandon it and uh, by seeing. Uh, then there are some things by, we can uh, overcome by enduring. Enduring. Uh, for example, when you meditate, uh, a mosquito can buy. When mosquito bite, it is a little irritating. But in, instead of slapping on the mosquito, if we wait there, if he will sing a song very softly and then land on you and draw a very tiny drop of blood and go away. That's all. Then that pain will stay for a short period of time, then it will go away. Of course, this is an exception of uh, malaria mosquitoes. Uh, normally, people don't go there to meditate. If they go there, they go take precautions uh, not to get bitten by the mosquitoes uh, in malaria area. So, by um, abandoning uh, by uh, enduring that pain you can overcome some taints taints means asava and then there are the taints uh, one can overcome by uh, avoiding avoiding uh, like uh, if there are poisonous snakes, we avoid that. If there are wild animals that can hurt us, we avoid that area. If there are highway robbers, we avoid that area. If there is dangerous uh, uh, wines, uh, like, uh, what do you call this, poison ivy, we avoid that. 
and so forth. We avoid certain dangerous situations uh, so that we may, may not be afflicted by their uh, contact with our uh, body. And then lastly, and we can uh, overcome certain things by uh, removing it from our mind. Then lastly, we can overcome things by meditating, developing the factors of enlightenment. These are the ways of overcoming things. I gave the summary of uh, the seven ways of overcoming things. And this last person that we mentioned has overcome all his or her taints and liberated from suffering. So this is the person who not only crossed the uh, stream, ogre, the, the stream here means ogre. There are five ogres, Kama ogre, Ba ogre, Dhrit ogre, Avid ogre, uh, four, four, four streams, four, four floods, ogre uh, floods. And he has overcome all these streams, floods, and then stand on the high land. What is the high land he stands? Is the purest state of mind, cleanest state of mind, highest wisdom that person has attained, and never to uh, resort to pain and suffering in samsara. In this life, he may have some aches and pains here and there, but he will not suffer. Suffering and aches and pains are the, not the same. Ache and ache, so long as we have nervous system, the body, uh, and so forth, uh, we, have, we may have pain. But from those pains, we will not suffer. And that is how this last person uh, we can describe. So, friends, uh, I think this is my talk today. The topic is Anusotagami, going with the current, going with the stream, going with the uh, wind. The opposite is Patisotagami. The Buddha's teaching is Patisotagami, going against the wind, against the current, against the stream. And that is not easy. Going with the current is very easy. Going against it is very difficult. And uh, Buddha said this Dhamma is going against the current, like swimming upstream. Swimming upstream is not easy. But that is what we have to do. And take time and think about it and try to practice. So friends, now, we want to do meditation. Normally, this time we spend a few minutes in meditation. So, uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, 
subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth. May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking or sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, let us spend some time uh, meditating. I like to suggest again, sit up in a comfortable posture. Focus your mind on your breath and breathe deeply and breathe out deeply until all your air in your lungs is gone. And then breathe lung full of breath again and breathe out all the air in your lungs. Again, breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly. I said in my last few uh, meditation instructions that when we breathe out very slowly, and let all the air go out from our lungs. There also will be time for carbon dioxide to build up. Carbon dioxide is considered to be not so always bad. It dilates our arteries and veins. When they are dilated, blood flow will be very smooth. And thereby you may not have blood pressure. People talk about reducing blood pressure through the meditation. And this is how it happens. But we have to breathe very slowly. There is no rush. You take your own time. If possible, breathe only 10 times in a minute. 10 times per minute. It is said that we breathe 25,000 times a day. And we make it 25,000. We make uh, uh, 13,000 if we breathe this way. Of course, we cannot do that all the time because we are engaged in various things. And therefore, when you sit to meditate and take a very uh, spe spe specific time to meditate, that means even one minute a day, two minutes a day, two hours a day, and so on, even five minutes, 
during that period that you dedicate or devote to meditation practice, do this breathing technique. And if you have blood pressure checking machine, you check your blood pressure. And then you will see for yourself the results. I have been doing it and I have seen the results. From my experience, I'm telling you this. And it will work for me, it will work for you too. So with this uh, very short instructions, I stop talking, you continue my, my practice. Even when I ring the bell and do my last uh, metta sharing words, you continue your practice if you have time. Okay? Now I stop talking and you continue your practice.
by means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings have in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, friends, I want to share my <coughs> metta with everybody. Those who are in hospitals, suffering from various diseases and taken care of by very compassionate doctors, nurses and hospital staff. May they recover from their sickness, regain their strength and continue to practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, and hospitalists who take their time, fix their comfort, health, to take care of these people. May they continue their wonderful service and find time to practice meditation and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and are grieving, may they free from grief and find time to understand the Dhamma, practice meditation, and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in very troubled spots war zones, poverty stricken, discriminations, and so on, going through various difficulties in various places, may find peace, happiness, and time to practice meditation to enhance their peace and happiness. All those who, whose categories I have not specifically mentioned, but all of them living in various parts of the world in 10 different directions, may they all find time to practice, understand the Dhamma, and go against the current, go against the wind, go against the stream, and find peace and happiness. May you all attain Nibbana. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. 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 Long life. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Bhante. Okay, bye. Thank you, Bhante.